All right, welcome to this week's edition of Attack the Track. We are at the Legacy Michigan International Speedway in the trucks. Now, I have gone ahead and run my laps. Uh, I am going to do a live qualifying, but um, track state info, it's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It was actually cooler when the session started. It's getting hotter, um, so my qualifying lap probably won't beat the old time, but we should still do pretty good and 41% uh, usage when we start it. Now what I've done as far as laps go is I did a qualifying, it was 341. It is a first lap qualify. Uh, it, you kind of get a free one, so uh, we'll go over that in a second. But then I did two 15 lap runs. This one was as hard as I could go and this one was trying to save save some tire and uh, then this was <clears throat> excuse me, another uh, qualifying attempt. So 385 is what I just ran just a second ago. 341 is the fastest for the session. Uh, I have changed the offset to plus four. I'm still at 12 to one and didn't change brake bias because I'm not using brakes. So let's get into a qualifying run. It is going to be flat out all the way around the track. You're going to run the first seam off the bottom. Now, I would recommend having like your session best lap up or something um, because although it is a first lap, it's not by that much. And so, if your first lap, really one and two, is where I tend to have issues, but uh, if I get loose or something coming out of, out of two on my first lap, then I run high out of three and four at the end of my first lap and then just go again at my second lap. So where I got a 3-4-1, I could probably get like a 3-5 or a 3-6 on the second lap. So it is slower, but not by a whole lot. So here we go. You can go all the way down on the apron or run this first lane. I like to run the first lane. Doesn't upset the truck as much. You just come down to the seam. Make sure you don't come off of it too early. And here we're going to come down again and just run this seat. Then back down to the bottom. 40.405. That lap was a 40.4. No, 405. Four zero five. I'm getting slower. slower than your best. Um, I'll show you real quick the 341. Go to cockpit. So this is another fast lap here. I hugged the bottom much better there. You can see me getting loose, fighting the wheel a little bit. But I think a lot of it has to do with it, it was a cooler track with less less rubber, so I had more grip on it. But uh, regardless, a, a three should get you qualifying in the, I'd say top ten, in top split, somewhere around there. And I uh, was looking at some of the lower splits, and they seem to be more fours and fives. And so if you can hold it flat out and... Um, not get too loose on it, you, you should be in pretty good shape. So for the long runs, I did, like I said, I did two 15 lap runs. Uh, first one was all out. Uh, second was saving tires. The all out was faster on 15 laps by a second, but I was quickly losing time. After three laps, I was down. Uh, I was already down a second by saving tires. After nine laps, I was down 1.6 seconds. And then after the 1.6, it started coming back. And so after 15 laps, I was down 0.9 seconds. Uh, but at the end, I was gaining over a tenth per lap, and that's without draft. And so 
uh, with all the racing here, it's, it's all going to be so draft dependent that you can't really, you know, determine what you're going to do from race to race because it's, you know, are you two wide, sing, single wide, you know, things like that. And it's it's all just about the draft. But anyway, I was I was gaining over a tenth per lap without the draft, you know, without somebody pulling me along. And so I, I definitely think that's the way to go if you're going to be, if you're going to have, you know, a 20 lap run or, or, or longer, I would definitely go that way. Um, so with that, let's look at the last lap of each run. So this is this is last lap pushing. And uh, one and two, honestly, is about the same. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on on one and two. But uh, you you start to lift around in anywhere from uh, the green light here to the start of the safer barrier earlier in the run. Like I'm start I'm I'm lifting here at the at the start of the sign, and you just gradually back that up, right? So all you're doing is lifting to the point that you can get down to the line. Lifting, getting down to the line, and then just tracking out to the wall. The saving tires method isn't any really different. You just start lifting earlier because you can run several laps flat out, and here you don't. Now three and four is where it where it gets interesting, and I think where the where the tire saving really comes in to play. So you see the seam here; it's going straight down the back stretch, and then it starts to uh, to turn right. And that's kind of my marker for here. So I go, once I pass that, that's when I, I start my entry. Now, if you have somebody behind you that is uh, really close, you're going to need to defend, and you're not going to be able to go this far out. You're going to need to already be down here. So just keep that in mind that if you run out here and you've got somebody right behind you, you're inviting them to dive on you. So just keep that in mind. So as we go forward here, Stop it. Right after the green light is going to be the banking transition to start the corner. That's going to come into play because what I'm doing here all out is I'm not going to lift until I get all the way down to this first seam. And that's where I'm going to lift to try to maintain uh, on that seam for a, a little bit until I think I can push and, and not hit the wall. But when the truck goes over this banking transition, it gets really light and it starts to kind of spin the the right rear a little bit and once it does that you get a little bit loose and if you don't check up with it you're just going to continue to slide and so be conscious of that that right after you get through here and, and there's this banking transition once you go over it the truck is going to get a little uh, a little light and a little loose it doesn't happen every lap but if you're ready for it every lap and it doesn't happen great if you're not ready for it uh, yeah, good good things are going to happen to you, I promise. So I'm lifting, I'm on here. Now I'm already tracking back, or washing up the track. I'm not even tracking back out at this point. I'm, I'm straight up washing up the track. And I'm about to get back in, in the throttle because I'm pushing as hard as I can. But just notice how fast I am washing up the track here. So I'm back in full throttle because I know I'm not going to hit the wall. And I'm just washing up the track. And that is absolutely murdering my right side tires. And you're going out. Now let's compare that with the last run here, which happens to be uh, 0.17 seconds faster. And I'm on the throttle less. So one and two looks about the same. The only difference in one and two throughout the entire run, like I said, I was I was lifting from lap one in one and two, and um, so you may want to go a couple laps and and not lift and then start lifting there and try to save a little bit more tire in three and four, and maybe you won't be as far behind and it won't take as long to catch up. But same thing here. As soon as I pass this, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, start my entry, but difference is. I'm not going to go all the way down to the line here for the seam before I lift. Pretty much right when I'm coming over 
this hump and starting the banking transition that's when I'm gonna lift and it's just gonna the if the truck does get light it's not gonna spin that right rear as much and you're not going to have that loose sensation entering the corner so I go ahead and lift come down follow the scene but I follow the scene for much much longer here so I was already washing way up the track last time and this time I hug the bottom a lot more and so instead of washing up I'm driving out if that makes sense and that's going to come into play uh, the later in the run because see I could very very easily here have turned the wheel a little bit more and stayed here in this uh, lane here and had a truck to my outside and I wouldn't have lost a, a single bit of speed and then I'm on his inside and getting ready for you know turn one and two and I'm, I'm gonna be on his inside and so that's a big difference there late in the run of whether you're washing up or you're driving out so we'll watch that full corner at speed here So you can run down here a little bit, uh, more so in three and four than one and two. Uh, you don't you don't really want to run down there in one and two unless you've got a a really good angle coming out of two, and uh, you, you've prepared for it and know what you're doing. But you don't want to just run down there if you've got like an early entry say and you're trying to hug that bottom. You don't want to do that. Here in three and four, it's a little more forgiving. I still wouldn't do it though, uh, it, that much. I would just I would just kind of run that scene, and um, I still got on it like a little bit early here. But then you run the risk of uh, saving too much tire and not getting the run out. But the, I think it's a really good show of washing up versus driving out. And you definitely want to drive out. That's where you're going to gain your speed late in the run and uh, be passing people late late in the run and be the guy saying, you know, how how's he doing that? How's he passing me right here? Uh, you want to be that guy and not asking that question. So anyway, uh, that is how I plan to attack the track here at Michigan this week. And if you do the same, hopefully you'll have some uh, good results. Good luck.